Yeah, hi, so I'm Matt Kehoe with CPAD Systems, and what we're doing today is we're going to um, show off our new sample board that was uh, the first batch ever made with the QFN components on it, made by Prototron Circuits. Thank you, Prototron. And um, what I've got here is just a small array of different components that I'm going to try to uh, place on the board and um, uh, try to see how fast we can do it and uh, how accurately with the uh, solid solder deposit. Okay, so I've got a couple of different parts here that I'm going to place um, onto the board. Some of those are um, there's the BGA, and the BGA is actually a little smaller than the footprint on the board, which is done on purpose so that we can um, show people what's going on underneath the chip with the balls that aren't used. There's also a, a T-SOP there, a thin, small outline part, uh, a QFN. There's actually going to be four QFNs, which is the, the real uh, challenging ones when it comes to wet paste. And then some small caps and resistors and stuff that really doesn't necessarily fit exactly on this board, but it's for, for testing purposes it ought to work. So we'll go ahead and get back on the board, and then I'll show you how fast and easy it is to place the parts. The boards come in with the tacky finish under the, under the paper. So when it's time to assemble them, the paper just comes off and you begin placing parts. Now I got a couple parts here that, like I said, aren't necessarily made for this board, but they'll do. They'll uh, touch both leads. So you just stick them on there. And I'm doing this right now without the microscope. Because I'll line them up later when I get them, when I get them on there. Get them all lined up after I get them stuck to the board. You'll see that when you set them down, they stay put. They don't move around. Now these little guys go right up in here. This I think I will use the microscope for. So he goes there. And that one goes there. You just give them a little tap <clears throat> with the tweezers. It secures them to the flux. It doesn't take much. Just enough to to get it seated down. That flux is put on with a 4 mil stencil, so it's pretty thick. And those aren't exactly perfect, but they'll be close enough. Now this guy here, kind of going to make him just fit in a spot right over here. Just because I don't have the exact footprint, but he'll solder up real nice right there. And uh, same with this one. Put him up here. He'll down, and flux, and of course 20 mil pitch thin small outline part, always very difficult to place, but with the C-pad you just lay it on there, and you slide it in, and you can nudge it and get it all lined up, and there it is, that's close enough. Of course the BGA is challenging, uh, obviously with wet solder paste. I've done this enough times where I can feel the, the balls uh, sliding into the trough that's uh, formed by the C-pad. So once I feel that, I can actually just slide the part up on a little diagonal push and um, look at it from the side and make sure that it's all lined up there. Of course, the QFNs are the ones that get in everybody fits these days. These actually place very easily with C-pad. That's fine right there. Slide it a little bit there. But that quickly you can place a QFN. And it's really stuck on there good. You'll see here in a minute. It's not just resting there. It is actually fixed to those pads. I'm just tapping on the top of it a little bit with the tweezers to help seat it in the flux. Here's another one here. Just lay it in there and tap it down. Now these pads don't have um, any real voiding issues at this point because they've already been reflowed and outgassed very efficiently. The flux coating is now on the surface versus bubbling out of the paste underneath this component. So it burns off much more efficiently and has proven to produce way less voids. Um, so now I'm going to use a uh, the microscope to look at these and you'll notice, you know, they all stay there. They're not going anywhere. Uh, I'm going to look at these BGA balls here real quick. 
just to make sure that they're lined up. And of course, if, if they're lined up on the outside, then they're lined up on the inside. So you just got to get them close, and that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. And even if you're just about 20% on, uh, or 25% on, it'll normally pull the chip right in. So that, that's done. That board's ready for reflow. And we'll go ahead and we'll put it in there, and we'll see how it comes out. Just again as a way to um, demonstrate the adhesive flux coating, um, you'll notice if I go to pick up this component, it actually picks the whole board up. So that gives you a pretty darn good idea how tacky that is. If uh, if it's on there good enough to, to lift that board up off of the up off of the table, then you know it's it's pretty tacky. And of course, moving it around like that doesn't hurt it a bit. Just tap it back in, and she's ready to go. Okay, so now here's the board, and we're ready to put the board into the into the oven. Uh, once again, the components are on there securely without worrying about them falling off. They're stuck down on that solder flux. So into a standard 6337 reflow profile. Top temperature on this profile is 225 degrees C. And we'll send it through and see how it looks. Okay, so now uh, the board's coming out of the reflow. It's about a five minute cycle. And um, you to see everything is soldered properly. Take it out.